Thank you, Michael. Um, just want to say thank you and congratulations to the player pool for, um, you know, for their effort in 2021. You know, we used a lot of different players in 2021. We had a lot of different programming. We played 10 months of, um, of the 12 months. We had a competitive game. So it was fast and furious. But the guys hung in there. Um, the guys were resilient. No matter what player was called upon, they stepped up. And, um, and in the end, you know, we have something to be proud of. Uh, we know that there's a lot, a lot of work still to be done. But um, happy with the effort of this group, particularly um, to show the resiliency to, to keep fighting and keep competing you know, against a very compact opponent. And in the end, we were able to get the victory. So as we end the year, um, thank you to the fans, thank you to the, to the players, and thank you for the staff for, uh, for an excellent year. Thanks, Greg. We'll start with questions from Brian Strauss from Sports Illustrated. Thanks, Michael. Hey, Greg. Um, Kind of fun and fitting that your your solutions won it late. Kind of kind of a theme for the year. Um, curious with all the different kinds of player pools and and coming and going and the large group of guys that you worked with. That's been a constant. How how do you how do you keep a a culture like that or a resiliency that you just described? How do you keep that embedded in a group when the faces and the names are there's so much churn and they're changing so much. So I think that, um, you know, part of it is just explaining to the guys what we're trying to do, you know, what our vision is and, and what we're here for. And then, and then the understanding that all this group is is a point uh, on the timeline of the USMNT. You know, it's a very special heritage. To be part of this is very special. And to really embrace that. And when the guys had the opportunity, um, you know, to, to be able to get the win today, to, to have the, the record for wins in a year, they embraced it, and it wasn't pretty, but you saw the grit and determination that they needed, and um, we pulled through. Next will be Sam Stasekul from The Athletic. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Greg. Congrats on the year and on the results. Um, I wanted to ask you about Jordan. You know, I asked, him about, asked you about him the other day, um, but what did you see from him overall over these last couple of weeks here, both in terms of his fitness and, and how explosive he was able to be? We saw a little bit of that tonight. And his form and his sharpness, and where do you think kind of he stands now as he continues to kind of work off the rust and potentially get his boy back into a qualifying roster? Yeah, he's getting there. Um, you know, it, it's what you see with Jordan is is the speed, um, the the ability to get behind the opponent's back line, and um, you know we were pleasantly surprised with him in camp. You know, I think our expectations were that um, he wasn't going to be as fit as he was, and. Um, you see he's, he's trying to work off that rust, and he's doing a great job. You know, the thing about Jordan is he's got a, a fantastic mindset. Um, you know, he really pushed hard the, this year to get to the point um, of getting called back in. And I'm excited to see what he can do in January. Um, you know, hopefully it ends up being with the qualifying team, but we'll see. Next will be Jonathan Tenowal from the Philadelphia Inquirer. The one question I was going to ask, but I'll come up with another one on the fly. Which is you gave Jonathan Gomez his debut, um, not for a ton of time, but he did a little bit for you, and he sort of cracked things open at the end there to help make the goal happen. What'd you think? You know, he's another one that I've been impressed with in camp for just the way he's embraced all of this. You know, I said to the team that um, you know it's not easy coming from the USL, playing with all M the elite of MLS players, some international players as well. Um, and you can see at times it, it was he was struggling and he had to regain his confidence and just reapply himself. But I think that's the strength of Jonathan. He's got a, a terrific mindset. He's resilient um, and he's got character and he just keeps fighting. And when we put him on, you know, that's all we we're hoping for is just he just com he competes. And, and that's what he did. He's very aggressive in duels. Uh, and, you know, in the end, he was he was on the field when we scored the winning goal. So that's a, a great feeling for him. Next, we'll go to Scott French. Hey, Greg. Uh, just uh, we, we talked about uh, Gomez there. Let's talk about the other debutants. Uh, Bassett obviously plays hero at the end. You saw an hour from uh, from Lennon and Cal got in there as well. Your thoughts on uh, the three of them? So, um, you know, Brooks, Brooks is a guy that I thought started the game well um, and then, you know, it ran into some difficulties, but it embraced the, the, the battle and what it was. Uh, you know, Cade came in and we knew that if we had any type of space or the or, or in transition, if they attacked at all, that he was going to open them up behind the back line and he was competing. And then Cole, 
Cole's a guy that um, you know Anthony Hudson is, is you know was was urging to put him on because of the impact he he can make and the goals that he has in him. You know Cole's a guy that shows up and scores goals, and um, we we're seeing that during the week with his ability, his finishing ability, and he showed that again tonight. So real happy for all of them. You know they just joined um, the brotherhood of the USMNT. So with the four debuts tonight, that moves the total under Greg to 53, which is third most all-time among U.S. coaches. Cole Bassett becomes the 57th player to score in his debut, and we'll be hearing from Cole following Greg. Next will be Drake Hill from the Tennessean. Yeah, Greg, you've, you've been pretty um, adamant and consistent with, obviously, what this camp was for um, and continuing and bringing the continuity into January and keeping the eyes on January camp and the fitness. Now, I'm curious to know from, from the guys that obviously were, have been in there for the qualifiers, guys like you know, Walker and, and Kellen and those guys, um, how were you able to manage what you wanted to see from those guys tonight with obviously bringing those debutants in there and seeing guys like Brooks who you've, you've wanted to be in the camp for quite some time? It was a balancing act. I mean, it was it was walking the line of um, you know making it bearable for the guys, right? Making it fun for the guys. We we know what the schedule is like. We know that um, you know most of their colleagues are on the vacation right now, and and they they're playing. But I think they understood that. And and the older guys, the veterans. When I think of Kellen and Aaron Long and Walker Zimmerman and Matt Turner and and Ro Christian Roldan. I mean, these guys came with, with absolutely the right mindset. Um, you know, when we were on the field, they worked hard. And when they're off the field, they enjoyed each other, enjoyed the camp, and really helped integrate some of these younger players into the program. Next will be Paul Kennedy from Soccer America. Um, congratulations, Craig, and, and happy Thanks, holidays to you and your family. Thank you, Paul. Um, um, in January, um, will you hope to get any uh, friendly games scheduled or scrimmages um, given uh, the fact that so many guys have had time off and that sort of show today, but also how hard it is to find teams in January is going to be easy. Yeah, I mean, I, listen, I know, I know exactly what you're saying. We're going to try to get some scrimmage games going, um, or we're going to get some scrimmage games, and, um, and that should help. Um, but it's, it's not going to be perfect, and we're going to deal with it. We're going to do our best and, um, to get these guys fit and to play a role in, um, in January, the qualifying window. We'll go to Ivis Kolarsap from SBI Soccer. Greg, uh, Brian Reynolds, obviously, he wasn't there for the first week. He stayed with, with Roma. Mm -hmm. he, he dealt with some adversity last week with Roma. He comes in. He, he still manages to, to get 28 minutes in this in this game. What do you think of what you saw from him in camp to, and tonight? And when you look ahead to 2022 with him, if he gets that loan where he can get some playing time, is he someone that you see as, as potentially still being able to show off that explosiveness and that, that something extra that he brings? I think so. Um, but you could surely see the rust today. And, um, you know, that's something that, you know, he can't help that. He's doing his best um, in training and he's doing his best to get on the field and it's been difficult for him. And um, you can see he lacks rhythm. You know, he's a player that we believe in as a staff. We think he has a, a top, he's a top talent and he has really high potential. But he needs to be playing uh, regularly. He needs to get rhythm uh, if he's going to help us in qualifying. Next will be Katia Costarena from ESPN. Uh, thanks, Michael. Greg, most wins in a calendar year for the U.S. And in general, when you think of what this year has been, what have the highs of 2021 been for you? Um, you know, for me, it's been the qualifying games. Uh, the, the eight qualifiers that we played have, have been just fantastic. Really good learning experience for the entire group. The Nations League trophy and the Gold Cup trophy, you know, really, really special things, um, you know, to get in one calendar year, two trophies, the first team ever to win the Nations League. And, um, you know, and to beat Mexico in the Gold Cup final was also really rewarding. But most of all, I think it's the relationships that we've built. Um, you know, the team, seeing the team grow, seeing the relationships grow, uh, seeing how much these guys are invested into what we're doing. And then at the end of it, you, you get nice rewards like uh, the most wins in the history of U.S. soccer. Next week, Brian Shreda from American Soccer Now. Thank you very much, Greg. Thank you, Michael. Um, just, Greg, I want to ask you about two players. Um, uh, Ricardo Pepe, look a little bit frustrated out there. Um, how do you, you know, work with a young player like that who you know, comes off a, a game where he doesn't look very happy with his performance um, and he's key to what you want to do? And then also Johnny Cardozo, 
what were the factors that led him to start? I know he was a late arrival and he's been in and out of the lineup at, in, at International. But what did you think of his performance? He looked pretty good out there. Yeah, I mean, another young player, 2001 year and 20-year-old um, that's playing in the Serie A, Brazil, high level. And I think, um, you know, for the most part, he had a, a good performance. I, uh, I think as the game went, he faded a little bit. But, um, you know, the field was really heavy, a compact opponent. It, it was a very difficult game to play in. With Ricardo, you know, it's, uh, you know, again, it's, it's trying to protect the guy. We believe in Ricardo. We believe that, um, you know, he's, he's a very good talent. We believe that he's got a really high ceiling. He's a very good goal scorer. And, and for him, it's just about getting a little bit of rhythm. You know, he's been off also for a while. You know, his last game, um, you know, for the national team was in, against Jamaica before that Mexico. Then he was been off, um, you know, with Dallas, not making the playoffs. So it's been a, it's a stop start for, for a guy like that. And I'm sure this break is going to help him um, refocus and get ready for January. We'll go to Simon Barb from Sporting News. Hi, Greg. Uh, the team pulled it out in the end there, and it was a gritty finish. But I'm curious, when, especially when the teams were even 11 on 11, is there anything you wanted to see the team do differently uh, to maybe take advantage of the opportunities you were getting? Uh, just your general analysis of that, of that phase of the game. Actually, I think the worst thing that happened was that that, that got the red card. Um, you know, I thought we were in, in, in good shape, uh, creating dangerous opportunities. Maybe our, the, our defensive transition wasn't so good. In, the, in that first phase, but you know, good movements behind the line, good balls in front of penalty, in, in the penalty box. We we almost got a, a couple goals, and all that was in order. I thought, um, we, you know, we, they played a five-three-two, so it was about getting the three in midfield to shift to one side, and then quickly get it to the weak side to exploit um, the lack of numbers there. And at times it worked well. At times we had great combinations in wide areas. But then when they went to 5-3-1, it became very difficult because there was no space between the lines. Um, and you know we, we didn't move the ball quick enough. But overall, it, it still shows the resiliency of the guys that were able to get the win. Yeah.